everybody, this is Joe Workman, and today we're gonna look at feeds in Total CMS. Now, feeds, they're kind of a multi-purpose tool, right? Um, when we think outside the box. Now, when I started developing the CMS, everyone said they wanted a blog. And first off, let me say blogs are coming, or if you've watched this in the future, blogs are here, okay? Blogs are gonna be a feature of Total CMS. But I wanted to ship something a little bit different uh, when I originally deployed Total CMS. And that's because I don't feel most people really require a blog, okay? I think most people just need a news feed. Uh, they need a feed of items on their web page. Maybe it's events, maybe it's you know whatever you wanna post about, okay? But the, most of these things are time related, right? It's what are this week's specials or things of that nature, right? And really a blog for those sort of things just doesn't really make sense because a lot of the p things that people use blogs for are content that a year from now doesn't make any sense at all, okay? There's no, no use to really have it any longer. So this is where feeds are powerful. You can display the last 10 items in a feed. You can display random things in a feed, right? Now, with that said, you can use things for other things besides a news feed, right? You can use them for, let's say, you wanna store tons of quotes and you wanna display a random quote on your page. You can use feeds for that. Let's say you wanna have some sort of like a looping feature, right? Some features of CMS are looping, right, of other CMSs. Now, a lot of times what the use case for that is a client wants to have a particular template of something. Um, they wanna fill that out and post a new one in inside their order, right, or on their page. You can do that with feeds, okay? So really there's a lot of uses for feeds. It's basically a way of adding new content to your site. Okay, and then you can display X number of those um, on your page. And there are different various layouts to display them. And uh, we're gonna jump into those right now. So let's go ahead and jump into feeds and see exactly what we're using them for. Now in this particular use cases, we're kind of using them for news feeds, okay? But remember, think outside the box. We can use them for more than just a feed of news items. So here we are inside the Total CMS demo project that ships with Total CMS. And we're gonna scroll down and let's start looking at some of the layouts that we have for feeds. The first thing we have, the first layout that we have is called a feed list, okay? And it's essentially a way of just blatantly listing out the number of posts on the page, okay? Now, posts can consist of an image and text or just text, okay? So in this example, I have the images on the right-hand side of the post, okay? But you can have them on the left. You can have them, uh, you know, basically centered at the top of the post and then the text is below it, right? So there, there's some flexibility here and we'll look at some of those options in a little bit. Now, another option that we have is if you click on the thumbnail, it'll actually auto light box the image to the full resolution image. So that's a nice feature. Right, we can go ahead and click on the thumbnail and see the full resolution image automatically out of the box, okay? Now if we scroll down, you'll see that we have a feed grid, okay? And this is a very great layout because you can define kind of how, how many columns you want, okay? And then the CMS will automatically lay out uh, your posts in a masonry style. Okay, and as you see, we have all of the images take up the entire top of the post. And when you click on these, you'll also get the auto light boxed image. Okay, so that's very nice. We also have some read more features that you can enable so that if a text is really long, um, it'll actually shrink that down. You can click on the read more and it'll expand that out. Okay, um, and what you'll notice here is that we can actually display, uh, the, change it based on the device, how many columns are displayed. So here on a smaller width, I'm actually showing less posts as well as a different number of columns, right? So that's a very flexible uh, way of displaying our feed content. Now on the admin area, um, we essentially have two stacks. We have the total feed post or the form stack, 
And then we have the total feed list stack that lists all of our existing posts. Okay. So if we want to create a new post, this is what we would do. We would type in our post here, drag and drop an image if we wanted one, save it. And then that new post will be dynamically added to our existing feed list on the right. Now, the reason that we have this feed list on the right is that we can actually edit things. Okay. So if we click on a particular post, we can actually edit that post. Okay, we can drag and drop a new image to replace the image for that post. Okay, we can uh, configure the alt tags for that particular image. We can get the RSS feed for this feed. Okay, so this is very powerful. Um, with RSS feeds, this really, if we start thinking out of the box, we can use this RSS feed to integrate into other things maybe RSS stacks for displaying content in different ways. Um, we can integrate things into if this, then that.com to maybe um, automatically post things to Facebook or Twitter. So really this RSS feed allows us a lot of expandability since it's a standard format that a lot of things out on the web already understand. Now, because the list and the post stack are separate, this gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of layout. Um, this way, if you don't want to have this two column look, you don't need to, okay? If you only want to have just the post, you can do that as well, okay? So because these are two different stacks, um, you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want the admin page laid out. Okay, so here we are in edit mode on the admin page. And what we'll notice here is I have the two stacks. I have the feed stack, which is our posting gener our post generation tool. And then we have our feed list, which shows all of our existing feed items. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the settings for the feed stack. Obviously, the first one is going to be CMS ID, which is the same across all CMS stacks. Then you have your image placeholders and then your text placeholder text. Okay, you can also hide the feed image. This is great if you don't want to have a image with your feed and you only want to have uh, text. Okay, you can obviously also show a save button just like you can with the text uh, stacks as well. The next settings here, I'll deal with the RSS feed. And this is going to be the title of your RSS feed, the description, and then the item link. Now, in RSS feeds, each item in your feed is always associated with a link. Now, since each individual feed item doesn't have a unique URL, you can actually provide a centralized URL that this can go to. Maybe this is a news page, or maybe it's just your home page. Okay, but this is going to be a URL to the actual um, web page that you want the RSS feed to link to. Next is going to be all the things that have to do with the feed image. And these settings are exactly the same as we saw in our images. So I'm not gonna go through all of these. It's the same thing as galleries and images. You can define the size for the thumbnails, for the full image, the resize logic and all that stuff, okay? And then the feed text is, this is the, also the same thing as the text stacks, okay? We can have the simple text or the markdown editor, and then we can also have the hipwig editor, which is our WYSIWYG editor, okay? You can strip HTML and save, have form height and whatnot. Now there is one extra setting at the bottom, and that is define default template, okay? Now when you turn this on, what will happen is, if I preview this page, what you'll see here is that the template text that I typed into this setting is automatically inserted into the feed post form. This is great if you want to actually define a template for your customers. Okay. Um, now, if you're using Hipwig, you're, you're going to want to make sure that the template is the template text is HTML, and then Hipwig will translate that for you. Okay. So you can put in Markdown or HTML or just plain text into the template, and then it will it will default that inside this box, and then your users can then maybe you know change that text to be what they want. So it's a way of giving your users a template of what they should be adding. Then they can customize that, and then when they submit it, it'll then be added to the list. This just ensures that each feed item potentially has the same formatting that the other ones do. So using this template 
feature is really great for if you wanted to, to kind of use that looping mechanism that I talked about earlier. So you can kind of define your template of what your customer is going to have. And then when they save it, it's going to be, you can ensure that it's going to be the same for every single post. Now, if we jump over to the feed list, we'll see that it's very generic, right? Um, you have the CMS ID, okay, that is obviously tied to that feed. Then you have the date format, and this is the format of the date that shows up inside the list, okay? And then you have a maximum height and an item height. Now, the maximum height defines the actual container. As you see here, I've, I have a lot of posts, but I want this feed container to be no more than 450 pixels high, okay? And then, so we have a nice scroll box. So this provides us a nice little scroll box so our users can actually scroll through all their posts, okay? Now, item height, this is the height of each individual item, okay? By default, it's 100 pixels, and that's probably enough to show you the first couple lines, okay? But if you wanna make that larger, you can. Now, just a caveat, the higher that you make your item height, the bigger that the image is going to be on the left, okay? So, um, you know, I don't recommend doing too much larger than 100, but, um, you know, if you wanna maybe show 120 or 130 pixels, um, it's not gonna look horrible, and, you know, maybe you're, you're, it'll show a few more lines of text. Okay, so now we're gonna jump over to the content side. So now I'm on the content page inside edit mode. And this is going to be the feed list that we saw earlier. So I've selected the feed content stack and let's go ahead and look at some of the settings here. Obviously the first setting is gonna be your CMS ID as with every other CMS stack. Next you have the counts. And this allows us to define how many feed items we wanna show based on the device. So on desktops, we're gonna show three, tablets, we have it set to two, and mobile, we will only wanna show one, right? This gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of, um, obviously on desktop, we have a lot more, so we can display more, right? Um, so this is a nice little feature. Uh, next, we have shuffle feed. And when you shuffle the feed, it's basically gonna randomly select um, items from within the feed and display those. So by default, it'll obviously show the, newest to oldest, but this shuffle feed is a nice feature. Um, like earlier I said, you can use feeds to display quotes or maybe customer testimonials, right? And this is a way of easily submitting those and then sh randomly showing them on the page. Next is the image. Uh, so as you know, we can have images as well as text for each item. And you, here you can display you know, define which actual image you wanna display. Do you wanna show the original full resolution image, the thumbnail or the square thumbnail? Now remember automatically out of the box, you get that light box. So when you click on the thumbnail, it'll actually auto light box to the full resolution image, okay? Now by default, the show date is turned off, but you can actually show the date as well and then define the format and where you want that date aligned. Uh, next for the layout here, uh, you, we have the ability to actually to have the list or the cards, okay? So right now, uh, I'm, I actually flipped the preview mode so that when I start changing some of these layout settings, you'll kind of see exactly what they do, right? So here, as you see here, I've actually changed the image alignment to center. I also did the image as a thumbnail and I showed the date just to kind of show you um, potentially another layout that could be used nicely, right? So we have the image on top. Again, if you click on it, you get the full resolution image. We then have our post date, okay? And then our item, our text. Now, other options here is we can control the width of the image. So when the image is set to align left or right, you know, how wide do you want it, the image to take up, okay? Uh, we obviously have padding for uh, the padding around the post. So we have vertical and horizontal padding. The flow text setting allows us to, if you look at this post here, the text flows around the image. If you don't like that and you want the actual text and the image to kind of be in two separate columns, you can disable flow text. And what you'll notice is that the text and the image are definitely inside two separate columns. Now next we have the style options. And by default, it'll inherit the styles from the theme, okay? Now, if you're using foundation, 
It also supports a lot of these site style settings. So we have the alternate styles for headers and text as well as all of our swatches, okay? And then if you use custom style, um, to whether, whether or not you're using foundation or any theme, you can customize the colors for your headers, your text, and your links um, using the custom style option. Now the next settings here allow you to, to define the background colors for your posts. And you can have a background and a border for each item, okay? Um, so basically it allows you to kind of encapsulate uh, each item into its own little block. Okay, now you can also alternate the colors. So if you don't want every single post to have the same color, you can alternate them. Uh, so as you see here, I have a, a dark gray background and then I have white. Okay, then I've added some border radius as well to each post, okay? Um, you can, if you don't want a particular background color, just go ahead in the, uh, in the color swatch and select opacity zero. And that will basically make that background color for that particular item completely transparent. Now, last but not least, uh, feeds support read more. I had mentioned this earlier. And when you enable read more, you'll see that we have the ability to um, essentially define the minimum size or the maximum size that content can grow to. So for this first item, it's only a small amount of text. So the read more wasn't actually used. But for the second and third options, um, the text is larger than what we've defined as the actual height, okay? So if I click on the read more button, what it will do is it will actually expand out and display all of the text for that post. And then if you collapse it, you can then collapse that again. And we have various options. You can change the, uh, the border. Uh, you can make it, uh, you know, change the link from read more and collapse to whatever you like. Um, you can change the font size as well as the actual height and the kind of the variation. What the variation is, is um, basically, let's say I have a height of 200 pixels as my, um, my min maximum height that I want my content. But if the content goes to 220 pixels, okay, basically this variation gives it a 24 pixel variant. So if it's 220 up to 224 pixels, it won't actually create the read more link. But when it does create the read more link, it'll do it at 200 pixels. Now let's jump in and look at the other feed layout we have, which is called cards. So here I have my layout set to cards and let's preview this. Now, when you set your feed layout to be cards, you'll notice that we have various sizing abilities, okay? And this helps us define the width of each post. So for desktop, I have my width set to 30%, okay? And what the offset is, it's the percentage offset that it is from the side of the, of the content area, okay? So right now I have 30% um, width with a 5% offset. And the offset, you're gonna wanna maybe just tweak it a little bit until it looks kind of the way that you think it should be centered, okay? Because by default, with this sort of layout, we actually have to make everything float to the left. So we have to kind of add a left margin um, of a percentage to kind of eyeball and center things properly. So here we have desktop sizing set to 30%. So that means I'm gonna get at least three posts um, on desktop because it's going to be 30, each one's going to take up 30% width. Okay. Then on tablet, I get set my width to be 44%, which is going to give me two posts. Okay. Per, uh, you know, column. And then on mobile sizing, I set the width to be 98%, which obviously is going to give me, um, a one post per column. Okay. Basically one post per width on the screen. Now, remember in card layout, we can also adjust the numbers just like we could with lists. So here in this example, I, on desktop, I'm displaying 10. On tablet, I display four. And then on mobile, I'm only displaying two, okay? So all of the same settings that we saw in the list options are also pertinent with uh, the card layout. Same thing for the rounded corners as well as the alternating colors for cards. And obviously the read more support is also fully supported in the card layout. And it work, It actually looks really nice. So here we see an example with the read more, where if I click on the read more, 
It actually dynamically uh, you know, adjusted the size of the card for me, and it even repositioned some existing cards so that our masonry layout was perfect. So as you see, feeds are very powerful because we can use them for so many different things. They don't need to be just for our news feeds. They could be for displaying random content, customer testimonials, quotes, right? With the templates that we can add to the feed post form, you can then create kind of a looping mechanism where your customer can fill out the template, post it, and then it's just another item that they have, right? So this gives us some simple looping. It gives us a news feed with RSS, right? It gives us the ability to have customer testimonials or quotes that we can randomly display on our pages that contain both text and images. We have two great layouts that ship with Total CMS. This is our list feed, uh, list feed, right? As well as our card layout, which is really beautiful. Um, I think it's it's pretty exceptional. I love the masonry layout with the read more, how it dynamically changes everything, right? Um, it's just very, very, very powerful. Now, there's one other way we can lay out our feeds right now, and I'm sure there's gonna be more in the future. But if you own our impact stack, make sure to check out the integration video with impact because you can now with impact display your feeds in a beautiful slideshow where you have the post picture as the background and then the content of the post is laid over on top of it, right? So it's just a really beautiful way to display your feeds in a non-traditional format, right? So um, I hope you enjoy feeds. I'm excited to see how you use them. And if you come up with great, more great ideas on how to use feeds, please let us know because um, I'm, I'm willing to share with everybody and kind of, you know, improve how we use feeds. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoy Total CMS. I hope, I hope you use it to its fullest and thanks for watching. Bye.